the beginning is so impressive, so wonderful, so loving. It's just like Romeo and Juliet. Oh my God. Promises upon promises. Oh, you are the only one that I will ever love in my life. You are the only fly in my web. You are the only map in my geography. I love you so much. I cannot do without you. You make me laugh. Anytime you're around me, oh, I'm so happy. Meanwhile, all your in-laws, they love you so much. They adore you at the beginning. Everything was rosy. And you thanking God for meeting your soulmates. And suddenly, I said suddenly, something happened. And you realize your, that your partner has turned to be something else. Anger is the word. And it cannot be controlled. Things continue to happen. Beating, slapping, arising became the answer of the day. And the love between Juliet and Romeo turned so. That is the result of domestic violence. Domestic violence in homes. But I wonder why they always keep quiet. They refuse to talk. They refuse to seek help. And before you know it, they die in the episode of managing. I will pray about it. Hmm, Christian, I think we need to be careful at this point in time. I know you might be asking, maybe I've experienced domestic violence. No, I thank God for the grace of God given to me. I enjoyed my marriage so much that I always thank God for it. But this is a problem that is affecting friends, families, neighbors, colleagues, brethren in the church, and they're keeping quiet. This particular channel is to help everyone, especially Christians, to get over their problems that they are facing every day. My name is Bemisola Oluwa Yemeka. And by special grace of God, I'm the host of this particular program, whereby we bring problems every week to consider and to get solution to it, using the Bible as a backup. The grace of God, I have the passion to help those people that are suffering from this particular dilemma, domestic violence. You must not die prematurely. You must not be abused anyhow. You need to speak out. You need to get help. You need to be prayed for. You need to get counsel. And that is why on Sunday, by special grace of God, I'm bringing a child of God that have gone through this dilemma. She is a testimony to our generation. And I'm very sure you will want to bring all your questions for her to answer because she will be there for us. She will answer all questions by special grace of God because we have put God first in everything. And we know we are going to help a lot of millions, a lot of thousands that are facing this particular problem. I know once you are a believer, the Lord will vindicate you. You will get out of it. By special grace of God, you won't die prematurely. And every power of darkness that is waging war that particular domestic violence, the Lord will help you out. There are so many things that the woman of God will tell you that day. You need to hear it. Maybe you are not exposed to it. You don't even want to expose your spouse just because he's a pastor, he's an evangelist, he's a leader of one thing or the other. That is why you're keeping quiet. It is time for you to talk. It is time for you to speak out. It is time for you to get help. And it is time for you to get delivered. You need to enjoy your marriage. Yes, 
that is how God created it. You need to enjoy your marriage. And because of that, you need to get the solution to that particular problem you are facing right now. So I encourage you, brethren, to meet us this particular Sunday, the 24th of January, 3 p.m. USA Eastern Time, and 8 p.m. for UK, and 9 p.m. with the Nigerian time on this particular channel, YouTube, in order not to miss it. I will encourage you to subscribe if you have not subscribed. And even if you have subscribed and you have not pressed the notification button, do not forget to press that. So anytime we go live on Sunday, you will be the first person to be notified because I don't want you to miss it. Even if it is not happening to you, what about your neighbors? What about your friends? We are brother's keeper. Please continue to share this message so that a lot of people can come over on that particular program. That is this Sunday, coming up this Sunday so that they'll be able to ask their questions. Maybe you are not clear about a particular thing. Bring your questions and the Lord Jesus, we use the daughter of Zion to minister to you. I know your life will never remain the same again. Hello everyone, I'm so delighted to be here today. This is our first time ever YouTube live and I know you people are awesome. I glorify the name of the Lord for everyone that is here. I know there was a little miss up. People thought it was on Zoom and they went for Zoom, but it's on YouTube. But we will get used to it. God bless you. Uh, thank you very much for coming to this particular live show today. And I'm very sure today is going to be a great day today because a lot of people will be delivered. Like you know, this is Bemi Share and Care. And my name is Bemi Sola Oluwa Yimeka, by special grace of God, the host of this particular program. And what we normally do on this program is to bring problems that are facing Christians every day. There's no way we won't have problems. That is just it. And you know, Satan is always very tricky in, in that. That whatever faces us, it wants us, it wants us to die in that sin. But no. And that is why this channel is necessary for every one of us. That is, we have to be part of it so that we'll be able to, you know, voice whatever is in, in our heart out. And let me tell you, this is also an evangelism because anything you say to, uh, to help others, you are propagating the gospel. There's no doubt about that. So it's not only me doing this work, it is all of us together. And whatever you contribute in people's life, it matters a lot and it will go a long way. And today's topic is very, very sensitive. And that is domestic violence. If you follow our video, you would notice that I, I stress more this January on this particular topic. And that is exactly what the Spirit of God is ministering to me, that I have to, you know, atomize more on that. I don't know the reason why, you know, at times when God is talking to you, you don't know the reason. But I know somebody is out there that needs that help out now. Because Christians, we can not continue to be in domestic violence and be keeping quiet. A lot of things are happening in the life of Christians and they don't want to talk at all. They don't want to say anything about it. Just because maybe the, the person is a pastor, evangelist, or maybe somebody very, very important in the church. We cannot continue to be like this because we don't want people to be dying prematurely. Things happen. The devil uses so many people to do a lot of things, and we don't want that. So by special grace of God, I'm so, so happy to see everyone here. Thank you very much for, 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 for coming up on this channel. And by special grace of God, this is just to let you know that at least once in every month, we will be going live so that we'll be able to invite somebody to come and talk to us. And today, we thank God for his mercy. In fact, it is, it is the Lord's doing. And we really glorify the name of the Lord for everything that is going on now. So without wasting time, this is a Christian channel. And um, it is compulsory for us to start with prayer. So I will bring up uh, Pastor Obison from UK to give us opening prayer as we pray. Let us pray. Eternal Rock of Ages, we thank you 
for your divine wisdom that you have given to each and every one of us, even at New Birth. Lord, we thank you because inside each and every one of us, as your children, your spirit is still alive. We exalt you for giving us the opportunity to be together, even on this platform, discussing practical issues that affect Christians. Lord, we ask that in our deliberations today, you will help us to think right, speak right, and even connect with hearts that are hurting right now, mm -hmm. so that at the end of the day, their lives can be changed and transformed. We thank you, Lord, because we know this broadcast will help someone, bless someone. And at the end of the day, Lord, only you will take the glory. Thank you for all that you've done. In Jesus' precious name, we're afraid. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. You are, it's always there for us, always. And I thank God for everybody just here right now. I can see a lot of people. My friend, Bim Sala is on. I thank God for you and so many other people that I may not be able to mention right now. But all the same, this is a sensitive issue, and we, we really want to tackle with it. Just imagine domestic violence. And you might be thinking, in Christendom, why should domestic violence be seen among Christians? Mm -hmm. It happens just to let you know that the devil, our adversary, always come in order to attack us all the time. Nobody wants anything to happen to Christian home. We're supposed to enjoy our marriage. But things happen. One thing or the other happens just because of anger issue or something. You know, I'm not an expert in this. And that is the reason why we have experts in the house, just to let us know exactly what is happening when we are Christian and we are facing this type of problem. Uh, by special grace of God, our guest is also uh, is already in the house, uh, but I will quickly tell you a little of her before I bring her up. If you notice, some the, the video we released, the part one and two, she featured in it, but uh, you know, I know we still need more of her, and that's why we're bringing her back. And uh, you, you always know, anytime we do this thing, I always want a minister of God to be a, a backup. So at the end of the day, we, we round up the whole thing. But if you have any question, just write it in the in the uh, comment area. We will be able to get it, and we'll be able to deal with that uh, uh, as as we go along. So, by special grace of God, I want to introduce this woman of God. She is a trauma informed domestic violence and domestic abuse recovery coach. She is the founder of the Nurture Woman, a private coaching and consulting practice that provides recovery coaching and mentoring support to women who have experienced domestic abuse. I told you she's an expert in it, uh, you know, and uh, she was a victim. So you'll be able to hear from her tonight. She is a conference motivational speaker. She develops and delivers training courses and workshops on domestic violence and healthy relationship. She supports and encourages families to cultivate intentional, healthy family relationship. And uh, so many things that uh, she, she has. In, in, uh, you will be able to enjoy her more today. And by special grace of God, I want to introduce to you Mrs. Feiyi Alawiye from UK. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. I'm always excited to show up, <laughs> to <Yeah>. share. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when it comes to domestic abuse, because we have a lot mm -hmm. to learn. And I strongly believe that, of course, when we know better, we should be able to do better. Sure, isn't sure. It? So, Auntie, I can't thank you enough. I want I give God the glory for you. I Amen. thank God for the day we met. Amen. You know. Through, through your sister and her amazing husband. <laughs> yeah, always Thank there. You. Thank you. So without wasting Thank time, you. Um, before I said, if you have any question, please put it in the okay. comment and we'll be able to attack that. But before that time, I really want us to, you know, want Mrs. Feyi to, to elaborate more. Domestic violence, everybody hears that. And a lot of meanings are always there. Domestic violence, domestic violence. At times, some people, they don't even know. Maybe it's something happening in the kitchen or domestic. When, once this is the domestic, you know, people might not even know what domestic abuse is. Who, what is the real domestic violence? And who are the people that have been affected? You know, we have a lot of questions today. So just let us know that. Let's start with that. 
Shoot, straight away. <laughs> so how do we describe domestic violence? It's typically a pattern, a repeated pattern of destructive behaviors that could be controlling, intimidating, um, to that one at least one member of the family inflicts on the other members of the family. So domestic violence is not a one-off incident. It's really a one-off incident. It happens in cycles. It happens in a cyclical pattern that someone might be in an abusive relationship for a long period of time before they even realize they are being abused. So domestic violence, it takes so many forms. It could be psychological where you have the abusive partner in particular, you know, gaslighting the, the partner. They might be gaslighting in the sense that they make them question their own reality. They could be deceptive in the sense that they might do something that everybody can see they did that thing and they will immediately deny they did it, right? And you can imagine what that does to someone that experiences that for a very long period of time, they start questioning and doubting their own realities. So it could also happen in the form of um, verbal abuse where the abusive partner is consistently using derogatory names against mm -hmm. the other person. There might be, it could include um, name calling every now and then, or even body shaming them, calling them all sorts and manners of names that are not um, that are not polite. You know, disrespectful, degrading them either when they are together or in front of people or in front of the children. You know, in the public or in private. So that it could be, it could take the form of verbal abuse. It could take the form of financial abuse or economic abuse, where the abusive partner takes absolute control over the family finances. So sometimes you could see situations where a particular person in the family is the one because they don't want the, um, the other person to have access to money, right? They want to control the, every, the, 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 the dynamics. So they deny the person access to money. They will be the one going to do the shopping all of the time. They might make the person question everything they buy. They might make them submit re receipts for even little things, right? So mm -hmm. in the case of women, some of them would have to write letters to seek permission to even buy sanitary towels for themselves. Wow. So they might not have um, adequate or enough money to provide food or even basic needs for the family to pay the bills, right? And there are also situations where you have the abusive partner manipulating the, the other person to obtain loans hmm. in the other person's name. They might forge their signatures to, um, to, to obtain loans or over, they might have um, over, over, they might have excess credit, that, credit card debts. They might have household bills in the other person's name and not pay those bills. So they could get the person into a lot of financial crisis while also depriving them access to money to provide the basic domestic needs, right? For themselves and also for their children. But having said that, it doesn't stop the abuser from being generous to other people, mm -hmm. right? It is only members of their own household that they will do that to. So there could also be the sexual abuse. I know for a lot of people, they don't realize that even in marriages, even in what we call covenant relationships, Christian marriages, a lot in a, in in a, in a lot of cases, sexual abuse happens. A lot of women experience rape. You know, you can imagine the situation with a woman who has been, you know, talked down. She's been abused um, verbally. She's been deprived, and then she's still being forced into having um, sexual relationship with the husband right there and then. You know. So sexual violence occurs without, um, and it's, or the, a woman could be subjected, the abusive partner could subject the other person into participating in questionable sexual practices, 
with multiple partners, with objects or watching um, um, things like pornography that mm -hmm. the other person obviously is not happy to do or participate in, but because they are being threatened, they are being controlled, they are being coerced and forced to do those things, they are forced to be part of it, but not necessarily because they want to be part of it, right? So that is sexual violence. And then you could also have physical violence. You know, I know the last session I did mention it, Physical violence is usually the, the last form of violence a lot of people experience. So by the time the physical violence happens, all other forms of abuse would have happened. So the physical violence, would it doesn't necessarily have to be the major things. Of course, those are issues. It doesn't necessarily have to be the kicking and the slapping, you know, those are physical violence, but it could also include having things thrown at you, right? You know, you could have the abusive partner because you ask them a question, they might feel challenged, and then they are throwing things at you. And the thing is, when the children witness that, right, they tend to do that to the abused person as well, right? So there's power dynamics with the ch things the children are witnessing in the household, and they do that. So it's possible that someone that is being abused can also be abused by several people within the same household right so there is also spiritual abuse and this is where you have the scriptures are being misinterpreted or or um twisted to to undermine the other person or to blackmail them you have a lot of cases that where you have the abusive partner consistently reminding the person they are abusing you know god hates divorce taking away their options, instilling fear in them like you'll be committing a sin, you know, nobody's going to believe you. They will intimidate them with the scriptures. They might even use their um, activities and commitment in the church as a way of controlling and abusing them, like saying things like your first ministry is in your home or you're always going to the church. And it's not because the woman is not managing the time, but it is because the abusive person cannot it wants to use it to intimidate them. So there is also digital abuse. So digital abuse happens where things like where any form of technology is being used to monitor and control the person. So you have situations where um, CCTV cameras, bless you, Auntie, where CCTV cameras are installed into the home, most of the time without the other person knowing right so you have CCTV cameras where they are being monitored what they do during the day who they talk to who comes into the house what they eat and then you have the abuser using that to challenge them at 2 a at, at 2 p.m i saw you open the door where did you go who did you speak with at 1 at 1 30 p.m i saw you pick the phone who were you talking to you know so the the cctv camera is actually used as a form of control to monitor and control the other person so they could also have um tracking devices installed into their phone so that messages phone calls um or even web activities are being monitored by the other person or they could have um trackers installed into their car again to control their movement where are they going you can imagine for instance where it, maybe you left a message that um you you are going to a particular store and for whatever reason you remember something else you're picking it along and then you branch to see that or you see someone you know and you could give a lift to their house all of those things because the person is monitoring your movement they become um systems of control and then you have to start you know, giving accounts of, oh, why you left here? You only said you were going to this place. Why didn't you call? Why didn't you do this? And you explain why you were branching this. You stopped at this place for, for a few minutes. Why were you there? So all of these things are done and they are done as, as tools and methods to control, manipulate and destroy the other person. So the dynamics of domestic abuse involves a lot of power, um, in the center of domestic abuse, there is power and control. So all of these other things happen because the abuser needs to attack the other person's self-esteem. Because when their self-esteem are being attacked, they lose their voices, they can't process what's going on with them, they begin to lose confidence in themselves, they can't reach out for support, you know. Domestic abuse also involves isolation. 
this happens where the person may intentionally shield the the um the abuser will intentionally shield the person from contact with family members or friends or loved ones they might deny them access to work they might deprive them from working they might um isolate them from places of support like in situations where the woman has experienced where she's experienced i'm um using woman here not because i'm not aware that yes men do experience domestic mm -hmm. abuse so every now and then you know for ease of conversation i might focus on you know man against man but not to say that i'm ignoring that men um experience domestic abuse too so for instance in a case where the woman has been physically abused and she's hurt you have situations where the woman maybe she's been beaten with a stick or she's had hot water poured on her and she ha she's had to go to the emergency room so you have a situation where the abuser will go with the person to be able to lie about what happened and to be sure that the person is also not seeking support and that's why if you speak to medical professionals, particularly those who work in A and E, when they see people come in and they say they hear things like, Oh, it was nothing, I fell down the stairs. Oh, it was not nothing, I you know, I hit my head on the table. Oh, it was nothing. But these are typical signs and realistic cases of domestic abuse, right? Um, there is also, I believe, overall all of these forms of abuse amount to emotional abuse because yeah. regardless of how you're being treated whether you are being kicked physically or you're being shouted at verbally or you're being sexually violated or you're being deprived of money or you're being abused because of your faith or belief or because you're car or your phone is being tracked regardless of how you are receiving it it all affects your emotions because we know of course as human beings we process things through our emotions so yeah. all of this are really one of occasion so mm. domestic abuse happens in cycles mm. and from there i would like to talk about the cycle of abuse right yeah. we know for Sorry, uh, because we have a lot of questions coming in now, because um, I thank God because <laughs> you have already covered the question, because we see a lot of questions are coming in in order for us to cover as many as possible. So I would like us to go to the question and then uh, we might come back to what it means. So the first one there, uh, it said, my question as follows. How does a victim of domestic violence recover from all form of abuses? thrown up, thrown at them, then when do you start noticing domestic violence in a victim? So just a short answer, then we'll be able to go, because a lot of questions are there for us to answer today. So they'll be able to, you know, spread it out a little. Thank right. you. Recovery journey starts after separation. Awareness of the abuse, I think from the second question, when does the person notice, you know, it's only a matter of time that you realize, you know, initially it's good, it's it's easy to make excuses for the other person to say maybe they're just angry and then maybe sometimes they would apologize for it and then they do it again. So mm -hmm. with time you realize it's a pattern that these are no longer excuses, these have become habits and you begin to take notice of them when they've happened after several times and you're not seeing any change, then how do you recover from abuse? It takes people different um, stages, different period of time. There is no one size fits all. But the key thing is, it is impossible to recover while still in that relationship. It's impossible to recover while still experiencing the abuse. So recovery can start first with you, your awareness of it, and then second, your acceptance that you are being abused and then you can begin to take steps of course it's going to require a lot of therapeutic support and time for someone to heal because it is very very possible to recover completely from the abusive experience yeah thank you very much oh wow and i'm very sure a lot of people we 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 understand what domestic violence is because a lot of me we, we just hear and uh, a lot of things need to be, you know, analyzed. There is another question. Um, yeah, maybe I will not be able. Uh, can you see your screen? No, it's really tiny. Okay, yeah, that's okay. Um, it says 
sorry if I do this because uh, <laughs> so how do we start correcting our homes to discourage the arts? That's the real question there. How do we do that? Because at times when it happens, so many people, they don't even know it is domestic violence. When it starts, it's just like a blow for us. You know, I, I said something like that, that in the beginning, the last video I released, that in the beginning, everything is cool, nice. And when they strike you first, they will ask for forgiveness. And you know, as because you love that person, you want to forgive and uh, continue, just like you said. So that's the question now, uh, please let, let me deal with it. So how do we start correcting our homes to discourage this art? Once you see it happening, do we continue right. to manage or pray about it mm -hmm. and patch it? Yeah. You know? Prayer doesn't resolve domestic violence. Um, we have individual responsibility to be sure that we are not the abuser and also we are not enduring abuse. Mm -hmm. That is the way we can correct it. You know, the awareness is important. Understanding what it is, is important. Self-awareness, it's about taking intentional individual responsibility to do better by the members of our own household. We know the Bible says a man's enemies will be members of his own household. Be sure that you are not that enemy. It doesn't have to be you, right? So it takes individual accountability, intentional behavioral change, and being sure that you are truly committed mm -hmm. to the best interests, not just for yourself, but the members of your own households. Don't be the terrorist in your own, in your own home. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's the way we can correct it. Yeah, uh, the, the the one of the question in the person that asked the question is say we taking a violator to prison correct the damage already done. Sorry, I didn't hear that properly. You said I didn't hear the question. He said we're taking a violator to prison correct the damage already done. That is when this thing happened, you know, and you report to the police and the person is being sentenced. We leave, you know. Right. Okay. Really correct the person after coming back. I would say, okay, that is a very, it's not a simple question. It's a very complicated question, but I'll do the best I can right okay. now. Not every, by the time someone goes to prison for domestic violence, they would mm -hmm. have caused physical damage or murdered somebody else. Hmm. You will rarely find cases. It's only now that coercive control is now becoming um, is now becoming legislated in a lot of countries. But even at that, it's still difficult to prove because physical abuse is what is obvious and is easier to present evidence for, right? So mm -hmm. even with the coercive control, a certain level of crime would have been committed, even that. Maybe the person has been manipulated to go and commit a crime, to kill somebody or to steal or, you know, to to commit some form of fraud. And then it becomes so, uh, an interest in the state before the person can go to prison. So as a person that is being abused, your priority should be your own safety, not the consequences of the actions of the person abusing you. I mentioned earlier that we owe it to ourselves individually because if I am intentional that I want to do right by the members of my own household and the other person is intentional that they want to be better for their own household, then we have a common ground to work on, right? So mm -hmm. going to prison is a whole new, it's a completely different conversation mm -hmm. because the person would have committed a crime that can be proven before it gets to that stage. Hmm. Thank you very much. That is awesome. Another question comes in now. It says, in terms of verbal abuse, bad name calling to your spouse, what should the other party do? You know, I know, I know, you know, Nigerians, sorry to say that we are we are used to calling names. It, little things like this, different types of names to our spouse. So what, what do you advise? That in case oh. of verbal abuse, because you mentioned a lot of abuses, you know, it, can, it may not be only physical, it can be physical, it can be spiritual, but this is verbal one. 
So if, in case you experience that, what should the other one do? Keeping quiet, just you know, expecting more to be to be to be banned on on, on her or him. You know, it happens right. to both parties. So automatically, it can be a man, it can be a woman. So it, it doesn't really matter. So That's you you had a question. Yes. Okay. So with verbal abuse, you have to be able to set clear boundaries. And I'm going to say that with caution. I'm saying that with caution because for someone that's been enduring it over time, the person's approach will not be the same as someone that is just being aware of it so that you are not going to escalate the situation into a, um, into a more risky situation for yourself. So it is about approach. When someone says anything to you that is unpleasant, you should be able to say to them, I don't appreciate you speaking to me like that. So a lot of these things come with conditioning and let me call it terrible upbringing, that people have been convinced that is how they are supposed to speak to, uh, to the other party. And, I, and I, because we're really, we're focusing on domestic violence in the concept of, um, the, the a marriage between um, married partners now, right? Because there are other areas of domestic abuse. So focusing on, on the marriage, a husband or the wife should not be speaking or using derogatory words against themselves, right? Mm -hmm. So have clear boundaries and you to be able to tell the person, okay, I know you've said this before, I might have overlooked it, I'm not happy about you saying these things to me. I don't appreciate you saying those things to me, right? And that is how you establish that sort of boundary and communicate how you don't want to be spoken to. Hmm. Thank you. Uh, somebody is asking another question. They say, dear speaker, I, I'm very sure uh, the person is directing the question to you uh, directly. He said, now my question is, how do we get an abuser who sees nothing wrong in what and how uh, you know what uh, and how they do things and even after you have tried to talk to them they tell you that it is who they are how do you so how do you suggest that you know that is that is that is the way i am you can't change me so how do you help such a person you can't help someone that doesn't want to be helped abusers that live in that level of denial that they claim that is how they are they are the most dangerous and the most destructive personalities to have a relationship with. You can have a healthy relationship with that sort of person because not only are they denying what their challenges are, they are not willing to take responsibility for it. So if they are denying it, they are not willing to take responsibility for it, you cannot help them. Mm -hmm. So again, it still goes back to that individual ownership and that person you have to make a decision. Are you married to a human being or are you married to a project? Because they become a distraction to your life, to your calling, to your purpose, because you keep hoping that the person might change someday. And if they affirm that, we know words are powerful, right? If they keep saying that to themselves without the willingness to, to accept that they have shortcomings or challenges that are not um, working, in your relationship, then it, the responsibility is up to them. You have to take away the need and then manage your expectations. You know how they are because you're you expecting them to do better or know better because you've been saying it a lot of times, keeps putting you, it's like setting yourself back to zero, right? So you mm -hmm. have to manage your expectation, see them for who they are rather than who you want them to be. Hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And in fact, so many questions are just coming. Uh, I love questions. <laughs> yeah, please, if you are on this particular channel right now, don't let us keep it to ourselves. Continue to share. Help us to share because a lot of people thought it was Zoom. So I will appreciate it if you can share to people that you know will benefit from this. Like I said, we are doing the gospel. You are doing the, you know, the the, the, the gospel together. We are, pro we are we are proclaiming the, the name of the Lord. So please continue to share so that other people will be able to be, uh, you know, benefit. Maybe they have questions, but they are not here now. They will be able, to, you know, they will play back, but they will not get to their answers. So please continue to help us share. Um, 
Another question is this. I will just give a summary of it. He said, can the, the child in the home make a report to the police? You know, that is one. And uh, even after you have tried to talk, to, okay, uh, um, okay, can a child who sees a domestic violence happening in the home make a report to the police or the pastor or just keep quiet about it since it was seen as offensive? You know, you talked about it, uh, keeping quiet. Can the child in the house report to the police at least to save maybe mommy or daddy that is being affected? That's the next question. You know, it's quite unfortunate that children live in these situations and it's very dangerous for children. Mm -hmm. Children watching two adults, mm -hmm. one adult consistently attacking the other one is psychological abuse of the child. <coughs> it is damaging to the child. Mm -hmm. So imagine a child witnessing either the father or the mother consistently beating, slapping, kicking, or always shouting at each other. That mm -hmm. is abusing the child. And of course, depending on the age of the child, anybody can report domestic violence because it is a crime. It is a crime against the state. It is a crime against humanity. It is a crime against God's children. And it, it should be reported. So any child can report domestic violence. Thank you very much. Um, let me just, one of the questions here, maybe we'll be able to deal with it before we um, receive more, more of it. Uh, what are the dynamics of domestic violence? Just a summary yeah. of that, the dynamics of it. So that I'll be able to yeah. recognize it maybe when it happens. Because some right. of us, we don't even know when it happens at all, you know? That's right. Um, mm -hmm. We mentioned something earlier, of course, when relationship starts, you know, it starts with kindness. There's a lot of charm. And I believe by orientation or by order of things, naturally, most of the time is the woman that goes and pursue, right? The, the, men, the men, sorry, the men are the hunters. They go after the women. Of course, you know, they are kind, they are loving, they profess love and thine love and all of that, right? So even that stage is part of the abuse mm. for an abuser. So people don't go into relationships and become abusive. It is not the marriage that makes people abusive. They oh, were already... It, it is already in them to be abusive. And part of the targeting and the hunting is part of the abuse. And that is why, unfortunately, I have a lot of cases that there are some brothers and sisters who may not necessarily be Christians. They've done all sorts of things. They are not even interested in Christ or being a Christian or anything, but because they want godly spouses. So you have the Jezebel, the men, Jezebel men and the Jezebel women. They go into the church looking for decent men and women who they know understand God's covenant and um, instructions for marriage, right? So you have situations where the abuse would have started before that relationship. And knowing unknowingly for a man or a woman, they start that relationship they are committed into the relationship. And the moment the abuser confirms that they have um, that they have secured them in that relationship, and mm. with time they begin to show their true colors. So mm. the dynamic of abuse actually starts even before the commitment into the relationship, because mm. the person knows, they are aware, they are very aware of what they are coming to do. And, you know, for this person in that relationship, someone that was really kind and nice to you, of course, you're looking forward to doing right by yourself. You know, you're looking forward to living happily ever after together. And then you start to notice some changes. Maybe the things you used to do together now becomes, how dare you? How dare you ask me to do that? And you're like, oh, but well, you used to enjoy it. Okay, no, I don't enjoy it anymore. It could be that the person will be, the abuser might be someone that would immediately apologize if you point out anything they've done wrong. And they'll be like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize um, um, that, that upset you. I promise not to do it again. And 
during the dating stage, they would stop. But the moment they've secured you in the form of marriage, then that becomes, what do you mean? I've always been like this. What do you think this is all about? How dare you? I'm the head of this home. And that is why the power dynamics for men and women in relationships are quite different. And this is where, unfortunately, you find out that a greater percentage of women, of men who don't understand leadership or how to be, to enjoy their relationships, a greater percentage of men are, abu are abusive than women, right? So mm -hmm. you have situations where the stats using even the scriptures, I am the head of this home. How dare you talk to me? So they become Lord and master rather than become friends. So mm -hmm. there is a tendency to become controlling. You have to seek permission to breathe. Basically, you have to seek permission to go out. You have to seek to write letter of application. Mm -hmm. If you have something to do, let's say there is a family function you have to write a letter in advance. Give them enough notice. Because if you've just heard about it, let's say it's your sister or brother's birthday, so for some reason they haven't told you, you know, and then somebody tells you, this is your family or your close friend. And you're like, all right, no problem at all. I'll be there. An abusive person will remind you how and why you are undermining their authority for not giving them enough notice so that you could go. So you, they find themselves seeking permission from this person. So you have that stage of the deception where they like what you like, love what you like, pretend to be who they are not, basically, and then mm -hmm. falling into that relationship and securing you in the form of marriage and the skills start falling off, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have situations where the abuser may realize they are doing something that you are not happy with because you keep saying it over time. And then you have a stage where they might start appealing to you and then they would apologize and make promises that they won't do it again. At yes. this stage, the abused person begins to rationalize the experience and they start creating excuses. Oh, maybe it was just having a bad day. Okay, maybe I'll just leave him. Oh, I don't know what's going on. Maybe because this contract didn't go through. So they start you know, rationalizing the behavior. But this is an abuser strategy to keep you in that relationship, right? So mm -hmm. before you know what's going on, it might they might now lead to an um it might now need to lead to another explosion, right? Because mm -hmm. you've told yourself, you've identified that a, you're being abused, you you know, you've spoken to it with your partner, you rationalized it, created all the excuses you can imagine, and then you, be, you believe that, oh, yes, well, we're moving on. And then all of a sudden, it might be something or nothing. How dare you? Why did you wear that? How did you wake up? Why did you cook that? I told you I want my food hot. I don't yeah. like it cold and all of that. So there might be explosion that could escalate to all sorts of manners of abusive behavior. Wow. And then again, they might apologize again, make all sorts of, of promises. Oh, I'm sorry I did this. I don't know what's come over me. I don't like what I'm doing. I promise to change and all of that. Don't tell anyone. And for some people, you have situations that where the abuser will tell them, I will deal with you. I will kill you and nobody will believe you. Hmm. Right? We have yeah. to understand that abusers have multiple personalities. They are one way on the inside and they are one way on the outside. Yeah. There are situations I've seen too many cases, too many cases where you as a pastor and as a counselor, you know, you are aware in the church that, okay, this family, they have issues. And then you gather together, let's go offer some support to them, right? You have the abuser who would, you would even find in situations where some of them will prostrate and say, oh, pastor, I'm sorry, this is happening. I don't know why I keep doing this to my wife. I've been apologizing to her you know, and I, I promise to make changes. Please pray for me, pastor. There's something happening I'm not sure of. And then you as the counselor and the pastor, you pray for them, you appeal to the sister, you know, you two learn to work together. You know, you are a couple, you know, God hates divorce and all that. You tell them to hug each other and live happily ever after. And then they <laughs> find their way. The moment you turn your back, they started the <laughs> moment you turn your back, they flip on the sister. And mm. say, How dare you? 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you are leaving, the abuse continues. So okay. a lot of these people are, are they are they fit into that category. I'll call them actors. They are brilliant actors and actresses. You know, I mentioned about them having multiple personalities. Mm -hmm. They appear mm -hmm. one way on the outside. They behave differently on the inside. So Thank that you. put the other person in a helpless position because there's been intervention. So imagine if the same sister calls you five minutes later to say, Pastor, please come back. This is what he's doing. You hmm. will immediately question it and wonder, but that's not what he said. He just made promises that he will do better, you know. But this is the reality a lot of people are forced to live with hmm. because the abusers and manipulators, they are capable of deceiving. They give you what they know you want to hear. Mm -hmm. And Thank even you. when, if you stay with them for a period of time, they will act in such a loving kind. Oh, I love my wife. Yeah. I can do without her. You know, you see them, you think they're, but the moment you turn your back, the yeah. fear. So mm. those are the difficulties and the typical dynamic of abuse. Mm. And I, I, I want to believe that with that, we can understand how that going on for a period of time, it can pull the abused person mm in a difficult position to reach out for support, to know who to trust, or to hmm. even know how to get help. Hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, people of God, we have a pastor in the house as well. I really want to di divert a little bit uh, about a particular question, so we'll just, start, I'll just relieve a little of Sister um, Feyi. And Pastor Go Bishop is from UK, you know, one of our pastors in the house is always there. Like I said, you met him in the last thing that we did, and you can see that he's in control of so many things too. He's a minister of God who can sell people as well. Pastor, this is a question for you. Before marriage, there might be some things that people notice in the in, in the other partner. Maybe everybody knows this this brother or this sister has anger problem. And they know the they know that it doesn't take shit. Any little thing it flares up. Now they are getting to marriage. Do you what do you counsel this particular person before they go into marriage? Well, I want Pastor Bison to answer that question. Because you are a counselor too, you are a minister. In case you see people, you know the behavior, you already know it's, it's, it's written everywhere that this brother won't. Hmm, is likely to be a serious person by the time they get married, or maybe the sister. How do you counsel somebody like Sister Faye? I'm still, I'm still going to come back to you. You will answer that question too. But as a pastor, what do you advise such a couple before they go into marriage? At least right. we can start so many things before it happens. Okay. Um, one of the things I I tell intending couples one of the things I am always clear to them about is never to confuse spirituality for any religious status. What's happening? We can't see Pastor. Um, Hello? I don't know. We can yeah. hear him, though. Maybe it might be network sometimes. Ah, uh, okay. We can't see him on the screen. Um, I think this will be from your side, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, I'm talking to the operator now so that I'll be able to help us correct it. Right. I don't know what is happening. Many a time, <clears throat> people confuse spirituality for religious status. Oh, that brother is a good prayer warrior. Mm -hmm. He's always on the streets winning souls. He is always in the church with pastor, assisting pastors all night. So many people forget that the person you are marrying, the person, the character of a person, and not the religious status of that person. Mm. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Yes, sir. One of the first things I told my my girl is um, that never you think. You are getting married to a pastor. No. Mm. 
You see, one of the problems we have is, and I saw this, that a pastor is meant to be a shepherd. And one of the things I learned is it is a taboo for the shepherds to lie with the sheep. Mm. It is a taboo. So one of the problems we get with intending couples is that they want to feel because I'm getting married to a pastor. So everything should be fine. Yes, it should be. Okay. Yes, it should have been. But the reality is this. That never forget that you are getting married to the person. And for that intending couple, a delayed marriage is better than a destructive marriage. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things I advise young couples to do is not even to look at themselves alone but to go and hang around the household of the person they are intending to get married to. You see, apples mm. never fall too far away from the tree. Hmm. No matter how much you think that person is now saved and his tongue, you know, Holy Ghost filled and everything, um, th there is the law of what you have what you are used to and when you are used to a particular set of lifestyle it is going to be very difficult to change that mm -hmm. so going back to your question and the person that asked that question my advice to intending couples that now found out that you know you know that kind of issues are on ground regardless even if you have distributed your i know it's better said even if you have sent out invitation, mm. even if you have, remember what um, our, you know, um, our honorable counselor just said now, Faye, just said that, listen, it is better you deal with things knowing fully well that these people are more or less like hunters and what they want to do is to capture their prey. Mm. It's just like a lion that wants to capture their prey and settle down, okay, to have their own feel of their catch. Personally, I will advise both of them to put a hold on everything. Mm -hmm. And that particular sister should make that issue as open as possible praise god because Hallelujah. in the multitude of counsel there is safety in fact i will say now this may sound too harsh i will say they should be more like the sister should be more likely in 70 percent ways to put a hold on that union mm -hmm. Why I'm saying this is this. Many people feel because, you know, um, I can change my husband or I can change my spouse. Mm -hmm. You cannot even change yourself. <laughs> and I have seen that. Okay? You cannot. Everybody was calling Jesus the good master, the good master. He says nobody is good except my father in heaven. Mm -hmm. All right? So please... I will say, never you confuse spirituality for religious status because, honestly speaking, the end of that assumption is destruction. The end of it is destruction, and that's my opinion. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we are very sorry. We don't know why the, the picture is not showing, but all the same, we are going to fix it before time. Maybe... Um, Maybe you can check out and check in again, then it will work. Um, Mrs. Faye, over to you. Shut, because we still have a lot of questions to, to deal with. In case um, these people are in the church, they're about to get married. Meanwhile, everybody knows that mm -mm, this is a signal that by the time this person gets together, it's going to be a problem. Can we just stop it then? 
or maybe they, we should just continue to pray about it. Maybe by the time they get married, they will, act, you know, everything will be fine. Because some people, they knew, they knew exactly what their husband or wife, they're doing before they got married. Some people, they saw it. I believe they saw it because of the, you know, when the courtship is, is still going on, things happen. So what, what do you think about this? Thank God. Right. I have to say that I completely agree with everything Pastor Obison has shared because mm -hmm. when the signs, I, I would use the word fortunate. When someone is fortunate enough to see the signs, right, mm -hmm. they should not go ahead with that relationship because it is more honorable to be single mm -hmm. and at peace than to be married and in trouble, right? Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. you have not gone into it, no matter how hard you like the person, you've fallen in love, you've invested in the relationship, mm -hmm. you'll be saving yourself a lot of hurt when the signs are already there. You already have your loved ones expressing their concerns because I know sometimes there are people who might think, oh, it's because they don't want me to get married or because they are jealous. Mm -hmm. If you are in that situation, I'm appealing to you to listen to your loved ones who will not lie to you. Take some time and evaluate what they are saying to you and mm -hmm. protect yourself from going into that relationship. Because for people that already show the signs, right, they are not going to change. You are not a project manager in your relationship. Don't try to play God on somebody else's life and expect things will change when you are married. So... Mm -hmm. Don't go ahead with it. And the other thing is there are people who, unfortunately, they are perfect to mm. a fault. And you will not see the sign to even be able to take that option or concern that you shouldn't go ahead with the relationship. They tick all the right boxes. They love God. They're respectful to your parents. They don't have anger issues. They can control their emotions. They love what you love. They hate what you hate. They are there for you. They support you. They apologize where they are wrong. You know, they do everything right to a T while you were dating. But mm. they start showing their abusive tendencies after you are married to them. So that's a completely different scenario. I know people tend to believe you can't tell me anything that the signs are always there. No, I'm saying it to you now. I've seen too many cases. The signs are not always there. I have to say this. I've seen men, some men and women who even were convinced that it was by revelation that God told them that that was their spouse. Mm -hmm. And they still experienced domestic violence. So we should be aware that the signs are not always there and it's not always possible for someone before they go into the relationship to know that they will experience domestic abuse. Hmm. Thank you very much. Pastor, I'm still bringing you up here. Um, and the question is this, in case a particular sister or brother comes to you and said, God said, even though, she or he has seen the red sign, but he said, God said, and especially when people say God said, you are handicapped to do certain things. In such situation, what do you do as a minister to solve this problem so that you won't be, you won't be tackling with domestic violence in the future? There are so many people in the church like this that I'm talking about, and I know people that are hearing me, they will be saying yes, because these are the things that happens. You know, insist or maybe maybe the because of the parent. Oh, you just have to get married. You're getting you are getting. I mean, why that person knows that it's not going to work out, but because he wants to obey the parent, or maybe. So, what do you advise for singles hearing this particular message so that they will not be a partaker of domestic violence in their future? Well, that is very very easy. That kind of person has made my job very easy. There is little or nothing you can tell somebody that has made their mind up. You see, one of the easiest job of a pastor, and one of the things I have learned as, you know, as uh, a shepherd, is, is that um, God gave us brain so that we can give him rest. Okay? 
and I, I say that with all humility and um, humor, um, if you come to me and said, God has said, who am I to say God has not said? That's number one. But my duty as your shepherd, I will read Deuteronomy chapters 19, chapters 30 and 19 to you. This was what Moses was telling them. Now, I want you to know that the journey, um, the life of the children of Israel in Egypt with Pharaoh was, is the same thing as an abusive relationship. And do you know one of the things I have learned about the abused and the abuser? is that the abused person will always want to make a reason for what the abuser has done. They will always have a reason to the extent that they will feel that it is the right of their abuser to abuse them. That's hmm. right. Conditioning. Okay. I, I am telling you this. How did I know this? Do you know, even when the children of Israel was taken out of Egypt, out of an abusive relationship. The Bible says that there was a king that came after the Pharaoh when Joseph died that did not even want to know who Joseph was and he put them in hard labor and he began to abuse them. Do you know after God himself separated them from Pharaoh by taking them out? You see, I believe that God taking them out of Egypt is another way of God saying that for you to overcome an abusive relationship, you have to separate. Hmm. He made them to journey in the wilderness, but for every time they journey, do you know what they said? Oh, our, we wish we were back in Egypt where we were taking onion and cucumber and garlic. Now, look at somebody's destiny is being trampled upon. And what they can remember is cucumber and onion and garlic. Mm. Do you understand? They were making up, in fact, in Exodus 14, when they got to the race, they said, isn't it have been better for us to stay in Egypt? At least we know that we are secured. Now, if that person comes to me and tells me, Pastor, God said, number one, that person has already confirmed what I don't have to go back and confirm. They've made my job easy. But Deuteronomy chapter 30 from verse 19 is what I will read to them. Mm -hmm. He says, this day I call the heavens and the earth as witness against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cause. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. Mm. Okay? So, you see, I love God. You see, one of the best um, relationship to God, in which we call religion, is Christianity. Mm. God gave us free will. God gave us free will. So that when we get to heaven, we will not be able to blame God. Mm, thank okay. you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's, that's awesome. You know, I know uh, you, this is not a topic we can just finish just like this. And that is why the Holy Spirit wants us to, um, uh, you know, atomize on it so that a lot of people can be, you know, can receive this particular breakup. And I just thank God for everyone. Um, there's a question that comes up now. You say, how, how can minister of God help out in casting out <laughs> bad eggs once they are aware of the, of, the, of the wolf they have become? That goes to Pastor too. Well, it's very, like I said, it's very easy. And I'm going to say this. This may sound a bit very... Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Uh, this may sound a bit um, out of point. But I'm going to be very sharp with this one. Um, first thing is, you find out that most abusers, like, um, you know, um, Faye said just now, is that they are so nice outside. They are very nice outside. You, they are nice to a fault. You won't know anything. Angels. They are the best. Oh, they are the best givers in church. Mm. They are one of the best titers. In fact, they know how to give prophetic offering to pastor. Mm. So, and a lot of times, because of those, um, you know, um, don't let me call it uh, the one that <laughs> called me. Uh -huh. You know, it's very difficult for men of God to talk. Mm, mm, mm. 
men of God have been so much dependent on individuals in the church's pockets that when they see evil, they are so careful because they don't want to trample upon them. But the reality is this. Every man of God has got that spiritual responsibility over his sheep to be able to say, hey, this one is a wolf in sheep clothing. So there is nothing like, how can? There is nothing like, uh, like I said, that's why I said that I hope many pastors will not shoot me. You know, I hope I don't become an enemy number one. Because mm -hmm. for someone like me, God will help you. I will just say it. And that's the end. What comes to the worst? You won't bring offering. You won't bring tithes. By the grace of God. But you're God, dead God is dependent on that. You mm -hmm. know? Those are the little things. Men of God should summon courage. Not to always look at people's pockets at the detriment of you know the welfare of the people god has given to them so you call it spade is paid thank you very much god bless you sister for i'm bringing you back for the next question now we notice that this thing happens and in homes a lot of a lot of families have been affected and they, and they always keep quiet they don't want to say it. Just because maybe their husband or the wife is an evangelist or is a pastor or is holding a particular uh, you know position in the church, and that is why it's fearful. So how do we how do we help these people? How do we make them talk? How, how do we help them so that you know? Because if you hear a lot of things going on right now, you just find out that a pastor shot the wife, and I'm very sure it doesn't. It is it, just it does not just started just like that. It started a long time ago. How do we help this particular situation of thing so that it will be stopped among Christians? Because I know a lot of people will be hearing us now. And if something like this is happening in their homes, how can we encourage them to look for, you know, to seek help, to, to go for counseling? They, they should, we have the, the, the ability, the audacity, the, 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 the utterance to, to be able to go for help. How do we help them? Because I know you 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 are an expert in that area. So how do you how do you encourage these people to get out of their shell so that they won't die just ignorantly? It's a thank you for that question. And one of the key steps of helping people is exactly what you are doing with your in your platform, which is bringing on the awareness, awareness. having this conversation, because abuse thrives in silence. And that is what a lot of abusers have been capitalizing on, knowing that, of course, with their parents and some of them, you know, all abusers are brilliant actors. They are out one way, mm -hmm. they are, you know, they behave differently on the inside. And even the pastors that are abusive as well, there mm -hmm. are police officers who are abusers, there are mm -hmm. pastors who are abusers, Dickens, Dickens, you know, all manners and yeah. category of people. And we have to understand that abuse is about power and control. That is why you will barely find an abuser as a mere member of congregation in the church. Mm. They are already there, they've occupied our pulpits. They are mm -hmm. there, they are the choir leaders, the church leaders, the mm. ministers, the geos, they are already there. Because the, there's a reason the Bible warns us clearly that there will be false prophets. So we owe it to ourselves to stop focusing on titles. Anybody can call themselves and say God called them. Of all professionals in the world, the pastoral, um, the pastoral ministry is the one that is the most difficult to access suitability mm -hmm. because anybody can go to the school of discipleship. Anybody can create a school of discipleship. So these people have already, they are already here. They are already amongst us. And that's why the scripture warns us clearly about wolves and, and um, to differentiate between wolves and sheep. Now, this is where our struggle is, right? Mm -hmm. As human beings, we become unnecessarily sentimental. So it is with sentimental attachment because this person, 
People are easily convinced by what they see. And these wolves have occupied these places of power. And that is why in a lot of religious organizations, in fact, in a lot of churches, the most you will hear is women, submit, 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 because they've already occupied that position to protect themselves. Hmm. So that you are not going to, who will speak to a pastor or a geo that is an abuser? Uh -huh. Because that person yeah. has already groomed everybody under his voice uh -huh. to believe they are so holy. I remember I was speaking to a friend of mine and I said to her, the day your pastor's wife left should have been enough red flag for you to know something is not right with that man. Hmm. It is a major indication, right? So hmm. creating the awareness and preaching the gospel in truth, right? There, hmm. I can almost confidently say there are more abusers on our pulpit than there are men of God hmm. because these people do not care about God's people. They are there to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Mm. So imagine what that is doing to the psychology of someone that is being abused. Where this person they look up to in the position of authority that they believe in everything the person preaches. Mm -hmm. So much it's saying God hates divorce. You're already telling that person you don't have a choice of going away from that relationship. Not even separation. Continue to pray and endure and hope for change because they are like-minded people. They know what they are all there to do. They are here because the mistake we make as Christians is to assume that unbelievers are people of other faiths or other beliefs. But no, the unbelievers are amongst us and they've occupied the most powerful places because abusers like power and controlling positions. So conversations and preaching the gospel in truth. For those of us that we know we are true children of God and God has called us, we cannot be afraid to be quiet while the demons are thriving unapologetically in what they are preaching. Hmm. We cannot allow the voices of evil to overshadow the voices of goodness. We have to keep saying it. We have to keep encouraging people. If you are experiencing this in, a, in an abusive relationship, don't wait to be killed. Don't wait for physical signs because there are a lot of people who don't ex experience physical abuse. So we have to remind people, this is a church. This is a ministry that will, it is zero tolerance for any form of abuse. Don't bring tight into my church while you're not paying rent in your own house. Don't mm -hmm. come and give me offering while you are depriving your, your, your family members of the basic need. Don't come and pay tight to me when you have not paid, paid your bills. Take responsibility. Have you providing well enough for your home, hmm. right? So those are the things. Of course, they could say they are saying it, but I know it is challenging, but these are the, re we really have to have these conversations because if we dance around them or we minimize them or we downplay them, we're also enabling the abusers. Abuse hmm. thrives in silence. So hmm. yes, awareness, awareness, awareness. Yeah, Pastor, you have something to say. If we I are going interject. to ask question. You say? Quickly, if I, if I may interject on that. One of the ways, um, and this may sound a bit intrusive, um, one of the ways I, as um, a shepherd, that I've been able to do this is um, once in a while, I invite the, the couples, the spouses of my ministers into our meetings. I invite them, I just tell them to sit around. Uh, and I I release I release the um, the ministers to to do what they normally do when their spouses are not around. You know all their spiritual jingoism and everything. Um, pardon me for calling that. Um, and do you know what I'm watching? I'm watching the reaction on the faces of the of the spouses. Mm. Um, I, I sit in the place in the church where I see things like that. So uh, when worship is going on. I'm looking at the worship leader and I'm looking at the husband. I'm looking at things like that. Um, the mom, And do you know what? That has saved us um, a lot in our church. And they know in, my, in, in, the, you know, in the ministry God has given to us, I tell our ministers that 
if your wife says she's not happy before you come to the pulpit, stay at home. Don't, bother. don't, bother. Uh, don't worry about it. Don't, mm -hmm. worry, don't worry. Whether you did, whatever she wants or whatever your spouse wants that morning, regardless of how bad it may look, now, ah, don't you know I'm going to prove it and you want us to make love now? Do it there. I told them. They said, Pastor, is that not a sin? I said, leave God with that one. Mm -hmm. All right? Why? Not because of anything. What is the essence of our spirituality when we cannot be judged by all in open? All right? Um, and that's one of the things I will advise um, ministries to always do. Um, once in a while, um, look over the minister and meet with their spouses. Um, you know, go and have dinner with them. You don't have to tell them you've come to see how they are behaving. Mm -hmm. You need to go there, sit down with, have a cup of coffee with them and see how they interact. Um, thank God for the Holy Spirit. He will always tell us some things are going on. And a lot of times, that's how I and my, my girl here, have, we've done a lot to be able to help even so-called ministers like that. I still believe that there is no need for your ministry to be exported if your internal affairs are in trouble. Mm. So I tell them, you are not even allowed. That Those are the little ways that we too, we've been able to identify those things. Thank you very much. Um, like I said, there is no way we can finish this, but all the same, the, the few things that we have already explained to people, I'm very sure it will go a long way to help a lot of families that are going through this. And if anybody is knows somebody that is affect, that have been affected with this particular thing, please, I will just employ you to help us share this particular message to people. And once you are sharing, you are propagating the gospel of the Lord because we are in this together. We want to make sure the, the Christendom is free of a lot of things that is affecting us. And you know a lot of ministers, why even minister themselves, it's not only men. Oh, women, you know, we are, we are dealing with the two. It's not only, oh, it's only women. No, men have been abused. In fact, I saw a particular tape one of my brothers sent to me, and I was so surprised that a woman was beating up her, in fact, or her husband to, in fact, he, he point the head like, like no man. And I was thinking a woman can beat a man like this. And it was only, you know, it's always the time, oh, it's the women that is being abused. But men also, they suffer for this too. So in both ways, once we are Christians, we have to, you know, knock the devil on the head. And I know so many people that are passing through this. I just pray that every, every damnation of temptation in their life, the Lord will help them. And this is the last question for Mrs. Yi and Pastor to deal with. How do we get out of domestic violence. When you realize that you're having it in your home, what's the advice? Because if, it, if it, they don't know what they're supposed to do, that is why you hear premature death, oh, he killed the wife, he killed the something. You know, hunger, it, that's it, it's an instrument from the devil and it can be done anytime. So what can, what can the person do? Because I know a lot of people will see, you know, play back this particular video. In case they are, they find themselves in domestic violence, as a Christian, what are they supposed to do? Is it to divorce or is this separation? Is it just to keep away for some time or something? You know, automatically they must have got married. They have exchanged their vows. Do they continue to stay in this home for their children to see, them, for them to manage or they continue to pray? What do you advise? Sister Faye. All right, Ma. Thank you for that question. Before I answer that, there is a very important question that somebody asked here, and okay. I think it's important to deal with it. Okay, let's and deal with that first quickly. The person has asked, it, it's an extension to the one the person asked earlier, and it says, but I believe that there is a cause and effect relationship that results in the abuse. So it's a common misconception mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. people believe the abused person would have done something wrong to, you know, provoke the other yes. person to yes. abuse them. Yes. So, oh, any abusive person, you know, I mentioned it, they've always had that tendency to be abusive. Mm -hmm. 
right? So there is no cause and effect, you know, and that's why the, our language, we have to be very careful with the language we use in the sense that saying they are always fighting. It's mm. a very wrong thing to say when it comes to domestic abuse because you have one person who is persistently or repentantly attacking the other person. And because they're still in that relationship time, that the other person feels the need to start speaking for themselves. So there is no cause and effect in that relationship. It is never the abused fault to be abused. The sole responsibility of abusive behavior is on the abuser, not the person they are abusing. I just felt it was important to um, address okay. that issue. That, so back to, the, back to the question, how do they get support? There are mm -hmm. certain things we need to be aware of. For people that have been in this relationship, that of course they are at risk already. When domestic violence happens, by the time we external people are aware of the abuse, we should not even be considering a round table talk. Obviously things, and I know this might sound like, oh, really? Yes, because abuse happens over time. It would have taken the other person to actually realize that they are being abused. So they would have tried to manage it on their own in different ways, be quiet, you know, try to devise different ways to please this person. By the time it escalates to a third party being aware, there is no room for a negotiation or round table talk. It shows the level of risk and the extent of abuse the person would have endured, even if the relationship is for two months or three mm. months, right? So what do you do? Safety is important because it is impossible to function in any capacity when you are experiencing and enduring even some of the things you can't even articulate or put into words to make other people understand, right? It is mm. a lot of domestic abuse is traumatic in any way or form it's being experienced. And the thing is, it really happens as a particular incident. It's a repeated pattern of cumulative destructive behavior. Mm. And of course, the power dynamics, it's that one person that consistently abuses. Right. Mm. So separation immediately the abuser, if they have not crossed over into the spectrum of personality disorder, because that is a journey of no return. Mm -hmm. So unless God in his infinite mercy decides to show mercy on the person, it's something I call, it's only a Damascus experience, which no human has the power to, to initiate. No mm -hmm. human has the power to initiate a Damascus experience. The one that happened that made Paul become so, right? Or is it the other way? That's when so become so. It is only God at his own time. We can't reorder it. We can't demand it. We can't request it or we'll be wasting our time. Hmm. And that is why we have clear descriptions of destructive patterns to look out for. And I'll keep referring again to Wolf. We need to check our own individual biases because we are sentimental. They are, oh, we, we love relationships. We want our marriages to thrive. We want to see people live happily. We don't want to see people troubled. We mm -hmm. don't like to hear about breakups, right? But some breakups are necessary because there are so many people living in marriages, but that in bondages that they think they are married. No, because domestic violence should not, it is not part of a marriage. So abuse in a marriage is a sign of bondage. Hmm. So when the Bible says, for I hate divorce, says the Lord, I need to clarify that I read from NIV because that is the part that we hear. And it is a way we enable abuse because we are already, not all abusive situations will lead to divorce a lot of them will. Because when you have a situation like the brother asked, someone that tells you that is how I am and I'm not going to change. There's nothing wrong with me. You have to accept it. If you think about the immediate short-term and long-term effect of the impact of that person's behavior, that is why 
what are our brethren doing in psychiatric hospitals? Hmm. Because as Christians, we have failed woefully and collectively over hmm. time to see and speak the truth. Hmm. We've been dancing around and being afraid of the hmm. demons that God has equipped us to wage war against and cast out amongst us. We welcome them. And because a lot of them are already seated, then we become sentimental. We start praying for prayers that God will not even entertain. Right? Mm. So Malachi 2.16, it says, The man who hates and divorces his wife, says the Lord, the God of Israel, does violence to one he should protect. Mm. Says the Lord Almighty. So be on your guard and do not be unfaithful. What does that tell us? The divorce that scripture refers to, it is the violence done. Not the marital covenant. Because the marital covenant is the agreement of submission to one another. But we tell people because they are married to these enemies of their soul. A lot of people already believe that they are offending God or they are falling short of God's um, glory when they separate for these people. So mm. we have to equip people to be aware. And when we look at the entire Malachi 2, we will realize that when the scripture was put into place, it was because at the time those um, prophets that professed to be prophets, they were picking and dumping wives like donuts. Hmm. And this was put in place to put a check on that. So anybody that is married now, and if you convince yourself that God hates divorce and you are continuing to endure the abuse because God hates divorce, you are not helping yourself. Because guess what? God hates violence. And it declares that he hates violence with a passion. Hmm. He hates violence. So don't endure abuse because you are a child of God. A child of God must not be abusive. A child of God must not endure abuse. Mm. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Actually, somebody made a point that I just want quickly to raise. He said, everything starts from our parents, you know, at times. <laughs> the, the particular the particular family we belong to we have been looking and a lot of things are being you know transfer just a transfer of aggression and it, that is that is just true so this is just an encouragement for families that are very young you know it it it, 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 it takes the, the the grace of god to determine within you that what i saw in my in the life of my family i'm not going to do it my my family is going to stand up a lot of, in fact, we can't go to that today because of a lot of background, really what causes it, the environment, the person they live, or, or what, what he believes. So many things are happening. But all the same, um, we will we, we soon round up now because uh, I said it that we cannot finish this topic. But I know the Spirit of God, the little one we are able to do, the Spirit of God, we minister to as many people who have been affected in this. I would just want Pastor, before I bring uh, Safi back again, I just want Pastor to say something about the solution to, you know, domestic violence in Christianity. Just feel at least, what can we do in case they find themselves in this particular type of thing? How do they get out of it so that they will be able to make heaven? Number one thing is um, seek help. Seek help. I found out that many believers we think seeking help is a sign that we are weak. No. Seeking help is a sign that you want to perform better. Seek help. Learn if you are in a controlling situation or controlling relationship. Learn how to drop help hints for people around you. Learn how to send SOS messages around you. Okay? Don't be afraid 
So always tell someone around you what is going on. Because in most cases, I found out that it is those kind of people that actually save your life. I know of an abusive situation that turned into multiple stabbings, not far from where we live. The guy stabbed the poor girl to death, I think 15 times, right in front of their daughter. Mm. Okay? Until date, I, I'm sure, I don't know what the case is all about, but the reality is this. For every time this woman should have seeked help, she was hiding under the fact that, you know, um, uh, husband is very scarce. I know we say that kind of thing. You know, husband is scarce, so you better hold on to the one that you have, but not in a situation that wants to, you know, end your life. Seek help. I know of a relationship that as soon as the man marries the woman, he burns the certificate of this woman. Proper burns. And the woman could not get out of that situation, just as he said, this man will be the one to leave money for food, money for, and when the woman buys everything, the man will say, come and go account. Okay? I know of a situation where, listen, both of, I'm not going to go into details of their career, but they were medical practitioners. And one day, the man, the, one of these partners said, you know, as a medical practitioner, there are places I can hold you that in two minutes you are gone. Seek help. Don't think seeking help is a sign of your weakness, but rather a sign of you seeking a better life. That's all I will tell somebody that is looking for help. Speak out. Speak out. You will be shocked that you have more support than you ever thought. Mm. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you very much. Actually, that is awesome. And uh, we, uh, we know a lot of people are listening to us and maybe one, or, one way or the other you have been affected, you know, or you know somebody that has been affected. Please continue to share this message to as many people as possible. Like I said, we're propagating the gospel together. And the more the people know about this, the solution out of this problem, the more the better. Do not allow our brothers and sisters to die, you know, just ignorantly, just because they want to cover their spouse. Oh, I don't want people to know because he's a pastor. I don't want people to know because he's an evangelist. I don't want people to know because they are leaders in the church. That might be dangerous. It's better we speak out. Seek help. Seek help. You At least you have somebody to confine in. You have somebody you can trust. I know it's always very difficult to trust people in the church at times, you know, because at times they disappoint you in one way or the other. But see, when, when you call God concerning it, it will lead you to the right person that you, you need to talk to. They, our pastors are there. They are always wonderful. You just feel that are just, you know, something else. But notwithstanding, don't keep quiet. Say it out. Seek up. Get up immediately. And when you realize that the violence is continuous, seek up you know separation for it is necessary at least it's not that you want to leave your husband but leave that place for for for, for safety so that you'll be able to you know there's something they said in the last video we did that it is always good is pastor Bison that said it that it is always good to be able to tell your story not for somebody to tell the story on behalf of you the meaning is that if you are able to tell your story you'll be able to testify and bring a lot of people out of their problem. But if somebody tells the story of you, that means you are dead. And <laughs> that would be not good because the day I read in the Bible that our death and our to be alive and to, death, to die is to the glory of God. And I said, oh, whatever I can do to, to make my life, for, at least for me to live, I will do. I don't want to die prematurely. I don't want to die mm -hmm. carelessly. So it is always good when you are facing this particular problem. Don't don't say, oh, what would they say? I'm the evangelist. I'm the pastor. I'm the leader of this thing. What will, what will people say that I have problems? It's better you seek up and, you know, you get help immediately so that the Lord will help you and people can even pray with you. 
You know, we really want you to enjoy your marriage. And that is why this particular channel is necessary for as many people as possible. This is just the beginning. The Lord has put this particular dream in us and we are be, we'll be bringing a lot of, uh, you know, topics that are very sensitive in Christendom that they don't even want to say on the pulpit. This is why this channel is being born. And I really want you to help us share. If you have not subscribed, make sure you subscribe before you go and press the notification button because by special grace of God, we'll be doing live program as much as possible. But don't forget, February 7th, next month is going to be our, you know, our Zoom time. That's another wonderful topic that we are going to bring forth for everybody. So just write it down. The same, the same password, the same ID for those of you that already have it. But if you don't have it, don't worry, you'll get it when you come back. And if you have not watched all our films, please do as many as possible. Watch as many as you can. Put your comment down. We will love your comment. And all those comments, I will still, you know, get back to you. I'm going to reply everyone by special grace of God. So before you go today, put your comment. Maybe you are unable to put your question there or your suggestion concerning things. Just put it there. We will get it right. So the last uh, lap. Uh, the last word for people that are affecting. So I will ask Mr. Fahey to stay for shortly, just round up the summary, then Pastor will pray for us again. Um, thank you very much for everybody coming. I appreciate every one of you. You use your time. And I know the Lord will reward as many of you as possible in Jesus' name. There's no doubt about that because we are not doing this as a selfish thing, but we want to get to as many people as possible so that Christians, we will be saved concerning certain things in our home. And you know, this is just the beginning, like I said, different topics that are very sensitive, we are still bringing it. And by special grace of God, our live program will be once in a month for now on YouTube and Facebook, whichever you want, but I prefer you to come to YouTube so that you can put your comment and I'll be able to see it quickly. So Sister Feyi, summary as we round up. Thank you so much, Ma. Okay, to the in fact, we have information for the abuser mm -hmm. and the abused. It is because of you we are having this conversation. And that is to tell you that the person abusing, we know how you do it, how you look one way on the inside and behave the other way on the outside. We already know how you operate. And to the person that is being abused, we understand to a great extent how that happens to you and the difficulty you are having. So that is to say, there is no secret. Hmm. Be willing to reach out for support. You don't need, as the abused person in particular, because you are at risk, you don't need to be ashamed. You are an amazing, awesome person. We believe your story. We don't need you to give us an evidence. We don't need you to walk to us with blood dripping over your face to believe you. We believe you. We are encouraging you to make the contact, reach out to people that you trust that can help you. And you have to be aware, you've been praying for change, praying for revelation. I believe you being part of this program, whether you're watching now or later, is a way of God answering your prayer to yes. say he hears you, he knows you. You know, the, the, when the Bible, when God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. No, mm -hmm. he has not forgotten you, right? It is never right for you to be abused. It is never right for you to endure abuse. There is no abuse in God's order of marriage. Be encouraged to reach out for support. Nobody is going to judge you. Nobody is going to condemn you. Don't wait for validation. Don't wait for validation. Do what you can in a very safe way. So if you need to call a domestic violence agency that is close to you, if you need to call your pastor that you know is reliable, if you reach out to people that you can trust that can help you, then don't try to figure out how your life is going to be afterwards, right? It's one step at a time. Your safety is important. For you to exist as a woman married or man married, you have to be alive to fulfill whatever position you are trying to keep. So your safety is really, really important. 
reach out for that support. Don't be worried about what other people will say. It is mm. very relevant in the reality of your life. People's opinions don't matter. People's opinions don't count because you know where the shoes hurt. You know this what you've gone through that you might not even be able to put into words. Be encouraged to reach out for support and believe that there are millions of other people because this awareness has been going on for years. For years. Domestic abuse is a generational error. You do not want to keep your children in that environment. Because a broken home is a home where there is abuse, not where the parents are separated. Mm. A broken home is a dysfunctional home where there is constant abuse, there is no peace, there is no rest, there is drunkenness, there is all sorts and manners of things that no human being should be going through. Your home is not broken when you are separated. Brokenness is domestic violence in your home. So you do this not only for yourself, but also for the sake of your children. Because a, you, a lot of people have been conditioned to believe they have to stay because of their children. Their children. <laughs> Leave for the sake of your children. The children we have, none of them begged to be born. We brought them into this life. And we owe it to them to do right by them, to protect them, to be sure they have safety because they are also experiencing the abuse as much as you are experiencing the abuse as well. It has impact on them too. Seek the necessary support. Don't wait for validation. Make that call. Go to that sister or brother or pastor, the reliable person that can help you to go forward. And to the abuser, you know you're an actor or an actress. You know how you live one way. You have the capacity to be good to members of your own household, but you made a choice to terrorize the people in your own household and be nice to people on the outside. Mm -hmm. If you can work on yourself and continue to, to, to display the niceness you show, you show to others in your own home, you have a chance of saving your relationship. But if you believe you are too, um, you are too, you are too consumed in your way. You don't believe there is any way or form you can change. Please excuse yourself from that home. Go and sign up yourself up for therapeutic support. There are different therapeutic support available. Get yourself a separate accommodation so that it is not the innocent party that has granted you an opportunity to share their awesomeness that you are abusing. That will now be forced to go and start looking for accommodation elsewhere with three or four children while you stay in the house. Please, brother or sister, if you are the abuser, please check yourself into therapy. Hmm. Go for therapy away from the people you've been abusing because they will need their own th therapy to recover from the abuse you've inflicted on them. Like I said, we already know how you operate. We know who you are. We know what you do. We know you are hiding. You will feel ashamed because you think you are, it will be a shame for you for people to know who you are because domestic abuse is a generational error. Like somebody said, a lot of people watched their parents doing that, mm -hmm. but it is no justification to continue that pattern. Mm -hmm. We are telling you it is not acceptable. We are telling you it is not right. You owe it to yourself to check yourself either into a psychiatric hospital because you need it or to check yourself into regular therapeutic support without demanding support from the person you have abused. You mm. need to fix yourself. Mm. And to the other, to the abused as well, please do not feel there is any shame for you to bear for being abused. Whether you saw the signs before the marriage or you are seeing the signs in the, in the marriage, it doesn't matter. What matters now is the support you need mm. to get yourself to safety. Because your mental health is important. God needs you. He needs your story. He needs your testimony. He needs you because you are important to God. So the shame is not yours to bear. The shame is not yours to carry. Don't take responsibility for the abuse you've experienced. We hear you. We see you. And we believe you. Please do and reach out for support. God yes. bless. 
Thank you very, very much, Safi. God bless you. God bless your ministry. Uh, somebody asked, well, maybe there is an institution that they can, you know, just to direct people to. Um, Sister Feyi is a coach and she's a motivator speaker. And she's, she has a, uh, a page on Facebook, which I will do after. I will put it in this chat. And uh, people can easily, you know, you can check it out and uh, just help people that have been affected in this thing. This is what she, she do all the time. And uh, you can easily be, if, uh, you know, like the page and uh, go to that page. But I will put it after the program. You will surely see it on my channel so that um, you can easily go there and uh, seek help. And by special grace of God, we thank God for everything that we have done today. And I know it has gotten into the life of somebody very, very, very in fact, this is very sensitive. It's not something we can just finish, but all the same, we just want to finish here right now. Um, and don't forget, if you are a victim, seek help. Please, I'm begging you. It is better for you to tell your story than somebody to tell the story on your behalf. For a lot of people that have killed their spouses, it has become somebody's story. They are no more there to tell the story because they have been warned, but they did not, they were just doing more spiritual. It is no shame. Whatever problem you are facing in your home, there's no shame when you share it so that you can seek help. There's nothing bad in sharing. And when you share, you know, problems, when you share, it, it, it's hardly solved. And you'll be able to pray, the program will be able to pray with you. They'll be able to cancel you and you'll be in on a safer place. So instead of us rotting it, I know a lot of our parents, they will say, oh, stay because of your children. But there are so many things we need to put into consideration. We are not going to talk about that today, but just be wise. In whatever we want to do, let us be wise and keep ourselves and our children in a safer place so that they will have a testimony in the future. Because these children are not ready to even read the Bible. They don't even have time. They are reading us. Whatever you do for your children, they're looking at you. Every step you take, they know what you're doing. They know what they want to emulate there. So let us be good example to our children and to people around us. Maybe you are a pastor, you are an evangelist, you are a minister of God doing one thing or the other in the church. Let us maintain that dignity. If a particular problem is happening in our home, let us speak out. Let us seek help. And the Lord Jesus will continue to help every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. I will call Pastor to give his uh, the, 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 the last remark and pray for us. But before that time, I want to tell you, if you have not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe and also press the notification button. So anytime we go live or maybe special program there, you'll be able to get it. And please help us share this Islam message to everybody as many as possible. And I tell you, once you click that share, you are propagating the gospel. It's not, it's not for fun. It's for us to be able to educate a lot of people in the things they don't want to discuss. These are topics in the church that nobody will, will come up and say, this is the topic we are going to do today. No, nobody will talk about that. you notice that a lot of things are being in the church now. They don't want to discuss this. And this is very sensitive. And this is killing people prematurely. And we must not be ignorant of certain devices. So I encourage you, please share this particular message to as many people as possible. On your WhatsApp, please help us share it. Everywhere, just share Let people know that we, we are helping them. And there is a lot of topics that will come up next month by special grace of God. So February 7th is going to be our Zoom time. Those people that have the password already is the same thing. But I will still post it for people that are here for the first time. So God bless you. I appreciate every one of you taking time to use your time. You know, you're supposed to be sleeping in Nigeria now and UK, and you are still with me. God bless you. You will be rewarded in the mighty name of Jesus. So I call Pastor Obiso to give the last remark and now pray for us so that we can go. God bless you, Pastor. Hallelujah. Amen. For the oppressed, hear me and hear me clearly. Or for the oppressor, rather, hear me and hear me clearly. God hates oppression. That is for the oppressor. God hates oppression. And God 
personally deals with the oppressors. Pharaoh, Nabal, is a good example. So, my admonition to you, the oppressor, is that change while you still have the time. Before the judge knocks on your door. For the oppressed, your weeping may endure for a night. But I declare your joy has finally come in the name of Jesus Christ. I admonish you, apply every wisdom that you have learned on today's program. Apply, God gave you brain so you can give him rest. Apply wisdom. Seek help. And guess what? When the time comes, you will be the one to help many others out of this difficulty in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. And I put you into the mighty hands of God. Let's pray. Amen. Father, we thank you. We give you praise for an exciting time of rubbing minds together. Thank you, Lord, for your divine wisdom. Thank you for the boldness that you have put into the heart of the organizers of this program. Thank you, Lord, for giving them the boldness to take on issues that even um, churches will begin to hide or run away from. Thank you, Lord, for everyone that you have brought together to participate. We exalt your holy name for this in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for every year that has heard this. Let this particular session bless their spirit, soul, and body in the name of Jesus. At the end of the day, Lord, that none of us shall be a castaway on that judgment day in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, Sister Feyi, God bless you. You are, a, you are a blessing to your generation. And I know your ministry will continue to enlarge more in the mighty name of Jesus. And the reason why God created you will come to manifestation, either Satan likes it or not, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you very much for your time. Pastor Obison, in fact, I thank God for you. I thank God for you. <laughs> uh, you're always there for us. Anytime, any day, I knock on the door, you always open the door. Your ministry will continue to be more stronger and you will Amen. not fall by the wayside in the mighty Amen. name of Jesus. For Amen. everybody on this particular line, I thank God for all of you. I love you so much and I thank God for your time. Do not forget, February 7th is our Zoom time for another case study that will be posted next week. And uh, I don't want you to forget, by special grace of God, we'll be doing live like this once in a month for the topic we are treating. For, for next month, is going to be a new topic entirely. But if you have not watched any of our films, please take time, go back to the channel, give me your share and care, and watch as many as possible. And put your comment. Please put your comment. It's not late. If you feel maybe God is speaking to you to help us, you know, reach to a lot of people, put your comment. And we will appreciate it. I always reply to every comment. And the Lord has been helping me. So thank you very much. Until next month, when we'll be live on Facebook and YouTube, I say God bless you and bye for now. God bless. Thank you.